Hello, I'm Bruce Manclark, heat pump water heater enthusiast and expert with the Hot Water Solutions Program. And I'm Wade Cohen, licensed journeyman plumber partnering with the Hot Water Solutions Program. And today Wade is going to take us through a step-by-step -step process of installing a heat pump water heater. Before we get started, are there any major differences between installing a heat pump water heater and a standard electric tank? Most things you do to install a heat pump water heater are very similar to the standard electric. There are some minor considerations for the new technology, but they're nothing to worry about and we'll cover them in this video. These tanks come in different sizes. How does an installer go about getting the best fit for the family? Well, like always, we have to consider the local plumbing code and meet minimum requirements. And then we ask the family if they're having any issues with the current tank size, and if so, then we'll upsize it for them. Here we have the tank that we've decided to replace. It's old, it's leaking, it's rusting, and of course we have pulled the necessary permits. In our previous discussion, Wade, you mentioned that there were some differences between installing a standard electric water tank and a heat pump water heater. What are they? Well, it's serviceability. We're gonna have a heat pump on here that's gonna need service from time to time. The one we're installing is gonna require six inches off of the wall, but that does vary, so make sure you check your installation manual. The next thing that you have to consider is airflow. In this case, we're in a garage, so it's not gonna require a duct kit, but if we were in a smaller space, we might need to do that. The other thing is we're gonna draw some moisture out of the air in the form of condensate, and we need to dispose of that properly as well. I see some tanks going with expansion tanks. When does code require an expansion tank? Whenever the system is closed, and we have an open system here, but if you had a backflow preventer on your house or something like that, of course, we have to have some expansion. Okay, Wade, what do we got to do to get this tank out of here? Well, we need to turn off the circuit breaker for the water heater. Now I'm going to use a voltage detector to make sure that the circuit breaker was marked properly, and in this case it was. Now I'm going to get it drained. I'm going to hook up a hose to it, leave the water on to flush any debris out of it, and then I'll shut the water off and introduce air. If it drains real slow, we'll use a transfer pump. Now that we've got the water heater completely drained, I'm gonna remove the flex supply lines and the electrical power. Now that we've got the old unit removed, there are some things that we need to do before we get the new unit in place. The old unit had the water inlet and the hot water outlet on the top. On the new unit, those are on the side. So I have to move the plumbing for that. We also have to have the six inch distance off the wall. So I'm gonna prep for that as well. Wade, you've been very busy. You want to tell us what you've done? Sure. Like I talked about earlier, we had to move the waters from the top inlet and outlet to a side inlet and outlet. So I've moved the water piping down there. I also used construction channel to space it six inches off the wall. We've got a styrofoam pad on the bottom to prevent the concrete from absorbing the heat from the water heater. Of course, if we were on a wood frame structure or something like that, we'd use a drain pan. We've also got seismic strapping on here. It's required here in the Pacific Northwest. Our next step is to run the condensate drain. I've heard the condensate might be acidic and you have to take special precautions before disposing of it. Well, that's only true when you're running a fossil fuel for your heat source, but since we're just drawing the heat out of the air, it's no different than the condensate on a cold glass of water on a hot summer day. Now that we finished up with the condensate drain, the next step is to make our final connection with the water lines, the inlet and the outlet. Well, you've made all the water connections. What's the next step? Well, I'm gonna turn on the cold water valve to fill this tank. Then can we hook up the electricity? Well, before we do that, we need to go inside and turn on some hot water fixtures and make sure we purge all the air out of the system and get it filled full of water. Otherwise, if we turn on the electrical connection before that, we could damage the water heater. Because I've filled the tank with water and have purged all the air out of it, now I can go ahead and make that electrical connection. Now that we have the electrical connection complete, the last step before we turn on the power is to hook up the temperature and pressure relief drain. Okay, Bruce, we've got the unit installed and I just turned the power on. Is there anything else we need to know? There are a few other considerations we should talk about. First one is heat pump water heaters. The default mode is called the hybrid mode. It's a highly efficient mode. For instructions on the other modes, please refer to your owner's manual. And the big difference between heat pump water heaters and all other kinds of water heaters is they move air. And because they move air, they have a filter. And that filter should be checked and cleaned approximately every three months. We really appreciate you watching. 
For more information, go to hotwatersolutionsnw.org forward slash partners.